Okay, so what I want to talk to you guys about is um, Tuesday when we come back, right, we're going to be writing our, we're going to start drafting our case essay. And you guys have all this research that you just did on your note cards. In theory, you have 15 note cards with full answers on the back. And if you don't have them done today, you will have them done by Tuesday, right? Yeah. 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 Good job. Okay, so you guys have all these note cards. And I think when you have it all in front of you, it's a little bit overwhelming. So what we've done is we've put together a packet that I think is going to help a lot of you, okay? So this is what you're going to get on Tuesday. Ooh, ah, it's very shiny, right? Ooh. On the front, you guys recognize this, right? It's all the questions that we had um, for when you were writing your note cards, okay? And they're in order, right? Biography of a scientist, scientific theory, <coughs> tested, real world applications. Do you guys remember why I told you it was important to keep them in that order? Yeah. Why did I tell you that? Who said that? I heard it. Second. Why did I tell you? Because those are the separate like paragraphs of your report. Right. Yeah. Perfect. This is the order that your paper is going to go in. Okay. So body paragraph one, biography of a scientist. Body paragraph two, scientific theory you tested. Body paragraph three, real world application. You do not have to think about what order this goes in. Aren't we nice? Yeah. Right. Okay. So when you open this packet on the very first page. It talks about the introduction to your thesis statement. We're not going to start that right now, but it's all here. More importantly, what's really great is that it goes over body paragraphs. So you'll open up to this one, body paragraph one, biography of a scientist. What's great is that it mentions note cards A through E, OK? You just saw that on the front, right? A through E. So when you're writing body paragraph one, what do you think you need in front of you? Smart. Note cards A through E, OK? That's going to make writing this so easy. Then you go to body paragraph two. Look, scientific theory you tested, note cards F through I. One more time, what do you think you should have in front of you for this body F paragraph? F through I. F through I. F through I, for those of you that did not say that. F through I. And then, I know you're seeing a pattern, right? Body paragraph three, real world applications. Who can tell me what note cards you need in front of you? Olivia? J through M. J through M, okay? So, that makes it pretty easy, right? Do you think that makes sense? Yeah. I think it's going to be really easy when you guys start putting information in this outline. You're going to you're going to breeze through it. Okay? It's not it's not going to be very hard. So what we're going to do right now is look at an essay that Mrs. Rudolph wrote. Do you guys remember your step up to writing stuff? Yeah. Um. So what's our green? You can yell it out if you want. Topic topic topic. Topic. What's our topic. yellow? Reason, detail, detail. Reason, detail, fact, RDF. And then what's your red? What does it do? Explaining. 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 So, perfect, right? We're just going to follow that. That was pretty easy for you guys to write. I know you all turned them in. Was that easy? What, what was your topic? I can't remember. What did you guys write? Bananas. 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 Oh, fun. Okay, so you remember that, right? You all turned it in for a grade. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. So, what Mrs. Rudolph did here, she wrote a paragraph. I went through and highlighted this one. So, her topic sentence, Julius Robert von Mayer is a very interesting scientist. So, we know, because of the order that it's in, that this body paragraph is biography of a scientist. Do you think that's a good topic sentence for that? Yeah. Is it very narrow, or is it broad? It's very broad. It's broad, actually, right? All we're saying here in our topic sentence is that he's an interesting scientist. Does that give us a lot to talk about? No. Yes. Yeah, it does. He can be interesting for a thousand reasons. He can be interesting because he has weird hair. I don't know. You can say whatever you want. There's a ton of reasons, right? So let's look at hers. Her yellow, she says, first, his theories precede other scientists on similar topics. She thinks, he thinks he's interesting because he did research that up before other scientists did. Her second yellow, these early ideas couldn't have happened if he weren't well educated. He wasn't. Anyway, so she thinks it's interesting that he went to college, right? And that that's important. And then her last, she says, lastly, Mayer's work was widely published. So what are the three reasons that she thinks he's an interesting scientist? Someone? Right. Oh. Uh, his theories come before all others. Mm -hmm. uh, he was well educated mm -hmm. and his work was widely published. Right. And that's obvious because I highlighted it, right? They're yellow. So let's look at the information that she uses to back it up. So her first red for her first yellow is Robert Mayer was one of the early formulators of the principle of the conservation of energy. Um, what is that? What, what do you notice about it? Can you see? 
Say it again, Beamer. Yeah, it's quoted. So, this came directly from question A. Who is your famous scientist related to your topic area? Okay, you all did this question. Hers on the back is a direct quote. It says, Robert Mayer was one of the early formulators of the principles of conservation of energy. So all she did, she wanted to use this, right, in her paper, because we know that this body paragraph is dealing with this set of note cards. So she put that down. How does she know how to cite it? What does she need to pay attention to on this note card? Yeah, Gavin. Uh, the source number in the top right. Right. So when you sit down with all your note cards in front of you, you probably want to have your source cards, okay? So she put this, she put the information to the back in the paper. She saw that it was source 31. She grabbed her source card. What are you going to start with on this page? In your internal citation. Yeah, Adam. The title, right? Normally we go for that author's last name. You guys are pros at that, right? Because that's what we did in our argumentative essay, author's last name. But a lot of you found sources that don't have an author's last name, okay? So you're going to go to the next piece of information, which here is that article title. It says Mayor, Julius Roberts. So she put that right in after this quote. Do you see this? That's all she did. And that's cited, which means what? If it's cited, it's not plagiarized. plagiarized. Perfect. Okay, so moving on. He is credited with coming up with this idea and the mathematics to back it up. So if we have a quote right here, what is the sentence needing to do? Uh, explain it. Right, if you put a quote in your paper, please explain it. Do not just drop quotes in for fun. Okay, so this is easy. Think about it. You guys have this nice little outline, right? One yellow, two reds. One of your reds can come off your note cards. In fact, reds should be your note cards. So you have a lot of that work done, right? If you put a quote in for number one and you explain it for number two, you're done with that chunk. And then you move on. It's going to be really smooth once you guys get into it, okay? So she dropped the quote in from her note card, she explained it, and then she can move on to her yellow. So this yellow is these early ideas couldn't have happened if you weren't well educated. So then she says, not only did he tend the classical gymnasium at Hellbron, the evangelical theology seminar, but he passed the arbiter, worked on the, at the University of Tumgar, and then received a doctorate in medicine and was a physician on the ship. She quoted it again. See how she has this citation? Did these come from the same place? How do we know? Because the citation was the same, okay? So then she moves on. She, well, she explains it first. She says, this shows he knew the human body well. And then she moves on to her last yellow. Lastly, Mayor's work was widely published. And she drops in her quote. Did it come from the same place? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's the same internal citation, right? We know that. So then she moves on, right? You'll see here, it gives you green top of sentence, yellow, some reds, yellow, red, yellow, red. And then what goes at the end? Green. 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 Who can tell me what this green is, though? Yeah, right. A transition. A transition. How many of you guys love them? Right, only one person. They're kind of hard, aren't they? I know that you think they're hard because we didn't really see them in your argumentative essay very much. Did you guys struggle with that? Okay, so we're going to, I think this time it's going to be a little bit easier. We gave you a place to, um, we gave you a spot to actually put them. And what we want you to remember about transition is that it should talk about what you were talking about, but then help you get to the next one, okay? So this says Julius Robert von Mayer's experiences allowed him to come to amazing conclusions, okay? So it talks about his experiences, that's in his biography, but then it talks about these conclusions, which goes into the work that he did, which furthermore goes into what you guys tested, right? So you can get into that experiment. So if we turn back to the front of our packet that you guys are gonna get, this one. What's body paragraph two going to be about? Adam? Okay. How do you know that? Because it's the second one, right? Does, there, does that make sense to everyone? Mm -hmm. This is your body paragraph two, okay? So, when we write body paragraph two, we need note cards F through I. And you sit down and you start writing. So, what we're going to do now is I want you guys to highlight this one with me, okay? So, we know that it starts with green, right? Do we know that? Yes. Okay. So do you think it's just this first sentence? Who can read out loud for me? Yeah, Emma. 
Mayer focused primarily on the idea of energy, but dabbled in many other con concepts as well. How do you guys feel about that as a topic then? Yeah. Yep. Do you think it works? Mm-hmm. Also, I want you to pay attention. Look how these, look how the transition in the topic sense works. Talks about his experiences that allowed him to come to amazing conclusions, and then here it talks about the concept. Does that seem to flow? Yeah. yeah. I think so too. So what color comes after green? Yellow. 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 What's our yellow? Like what is yellow? RDF. 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 Reason detail fact. Who wants to read our yellow?
Thank you. Beamer, say that again. Plus it has a citation. Um, it has a citation. It's going to be really easy to look at your paper and know what came off the note card, isn't it? Because it should have a citation. Let me show you what note card it came off of. So, she had question H. What is another experiment that can be done to test how she demonstrate this R theory? What source did it come from? 31. 31. We've already used that once, right? So we know what the citation is going to look like. And her answer to this question, I want you to pay attention, because this does something a little bit funny, okay? Her answer says, pressure put on materials causes them to break down. Quote, the reduction of these figures yielded the equation 1 kilocalorie equals 365 kilogram meters. Is that what she put in her paper? Did she put that entire answer in her paper? Yes. No, Did no, she? No, no. It's not all there, is it? It does not matter. You guys, you have all these answers, but if something doesn't work, don't use it. Use what you need. She needed this quote. What else looks funny in this sentence? What's different? Keith. That. That. Thank you. Do you see this that? What's going on here? What is that? She added it. She added it. How do you know that? She put it in brackets. Yeah, brackets. Why would you add something to a direct quote? To make it make sense. Why would you add something to a direct quote? What do you think? Yeah, what do you think? Um, so right, you still need to have a direct quote, but sometimes they don't match, right? Sometimes you've got a direct quote that's in past tense and you're writing in present tense, and you can change these things. It still means it's a direct quote. It just makes it easier for your reader to understand. Are we clear on that? I don't want you guys to think that you can't use a direct quote because it doesn't say it exactly how you need it. You did a lot of research, you did a lot of work, make sure that your research is doing what it needs to in your paper. So, we have that read. What's the next sentence? Can someone read it? This high fast key, thank you. Is that related to the chemical process of how calories are burned in the human body? Is that our, what is that? Another pink. Another red, right? Yeah. You should just combine the yellow with the Okay, so if that's our last what do you think that last sentence is? Julius Robert von Baer's energy work is still beneficial in modern society. Transition. Transition. So what color is it? Green. 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 What? Blue. Oh, it's blue. blue. Green. Green. Transition. Green. So if this paragraph, stay with me because I'm about to blow your mind. If this paragraph was talking about his energy work, what do you think the next paragraph is talking about? Energy. Oh, Beaver, say it louder. The real world. Real uh, world. And do you know what? That transition was so good that you didn't even have to look back at this packet. But look at that. What's the topic? Uh, of body paragraph three. Real, real world, world applications. Is this making sense? Yeah. Do you think it's going to be easy when you plug it all in? Yeah. All right. Who has questions? Anyone? What's up, Olivia? So for each paragraph, you don't have to. Perfect. Did everyone hear that question? Yes. You do not have to use every single note card that you have. Do not try to cram 15 note cards in this unless you want to use all of them, okay? What you need to be doing is using your research. We don't want to see a paper that doesn't have any internal citations. We don't want to see a paper that doesn't have any outside research. This isn't an opinion essay, right? This is a research essay. But you don't have to use everything, okay? What I suggest doing is sitting down with all your 15 cards Make sure that they're still separated into your um, body paragraphs. Sitting down with all of them and looking through and seeing what's your strongest research. There's going to be cards that you know are better than other ones. You know you found a lot of information on a certain topic or you really like how this one was explained. Use those, okay? It's going to feel better if you use those. Do we have any other questions? How are you guys feeling? Pretty good. Uh, I, I thumbs up, like thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. How are you guys feeling? About starting to write on Tuesday. I need to see everyone's thumbs. I see, I see. I see, I see. Okay. Do you think this helped you? Do you think yeah. this is going to be helpful? Yeah, see. Yeah, a lot. See. Oh, that well, makes me happy. Because we don't want you guys to stress out, okay? We don't want any tears. We don't want you guys freaking out. Also, we're here to help you, okay? So if you guys need help, just ask. One more thing I want to talk about. Where did she put it? Where did she have her appendix A? Oh, an appendix. 
and you start with the blue. One more thing. In your paper, you guys are going to need to um, 